morning, seven o'clock in Central Europe, Thursday morning, July the 4th. This is Today's Business Europe, live from London. Our main headline so far, having seized control of Vivendi Universal, France's business elite admits that the media giant's cash position is, quote, stretched. Promising swift action, they install AXA boss Claude Bebe as the power behind Vivendi's throne. And good morning, uh, Manus Cranny. Welcome to the show. Looks as if uh, in Lang Corporation, another vicious day for them yesterday. And more breaking news that Dr. Reddy's has another generic patent delivered to them by the FDA. We'll take a look at the Elan story and Recovery Watch. We should be fairly well supported at the European Open. U.S. indices, as the, uh, the volume trickled down towards today's public holiday, managed uh, to uh, ignite a rally after we had closed down last night. In Asia, however, still trouble in Tokyo, as you can see. Concern about perhaps the yen or about technology in general has led some of those big exporters into negative territory, and therefore we're showing red. Other markets like Hong Kong, however, not doing too badly. Let's get the latest international news from Serena Alawa. Thanks, Simon. Good morning. The United Nations mission in Bosnia gets a temporary respite as the Security Council votes to extend its mandate until July the 15th. The White House says company lawyers are to blame for President George W. Bush's failure to disclose the details of shares he sold while he was a company director 10 years ago. And in a keynote speech to Parliament, French Prime Minister Jean-Pierre Raffarin has outlined his vision for the government over the next five years. Right, today, of course, uh, is a big decision day for the central banks around Europe. You had Norway raising rates yesterday, as we expected. The Riksbank Bank will make its announcement tomorrow. But this lunchtime, it is the turn of the European Central Bank and indeed the Bank of England to announce whether or not they're raising rates. Let's link live uh, for both of those banks. Uh, in Luxembourg, where the ECB is meeting, is Raymond Franken, CNBC reporter, and Geoffrey Dix, UK economist for the Royal Bank of Scotland, joins me here in London. Let me keep off with you, Ray. Uh, as things stand at the moment, what is the ECB likely to do? Well, it doesn't look like uh, the ECB is uh, going to do anything in terms of interest rates. Only two days ago, Wim Duisenberg, the president of the uh, central bank, said that uh, uh, when testifying in front of the European Parliament in Strasbourg, he said that uh, inflation in Europe is uh, coming down, but not as uh, rapidly as the, the ECB had been hoping. Should I go for a nice inflation hotspot because I'll get nice asset inflation? I don't think it makes a lot of difference in the present environment until we get concrete signs that there is a global recovery on the way that what we're seeing now on the equity markets isn't a sign that the global economy is going to go backwards over the second half of the year. I don't think it matters which country you invest in. I think you have to be just very selective on which sectors and which companies in any particular country you invest in. Germany's E.ON says it's tightening its grip on Ruhr gas. The utility is poised to take full control of Germany's biggest gas distributor after offering to pay 4.1 billion euros for the 40% it doesn't already own. Officially, though, E.ON is still awaiting government approval for its takeover. That would involve uh, a decision by the cartel office being vetoed, being overturned. They uh, unanimously recommended that the deal be blocked on competition grounds. Sources say that E.ON's supervisory board has had talks with the government and that an announcement could come as early as Friday. We're going to take a break. After that, we'll go live to Singapore. The dollar is ramping higher as we enter this public holiday in the States. People apparently unwilling uh, to maintain some long positions and the euro suffers as a result. Also, while well, we'll get a pop at the Open this Thursday. Seven. Good morning if you've just joined us. July the 4th, Independence Day in the United States. But before the Yanks went home, they pushed the indices higher last night. And that should mean we're fairly well supported at the European Open. And in fact, uh, the volumes on this move uh, at the beginning of the session in particular uh, were really quite good. And uh, by the end of the session, as of course the trade petered out in advance of today's public holiday, by the end, one and a half billion shares on the New York Stock Exchange, 2.6 billion shares traded hands on the Nasdaq. You see the dollar higher against these Nordic currencies so far today and indeed uh, against the Swiss franc as well. 150.05. 150 more or less the figure is where we're trading on uh, dollar Swiss at the moment. Let's get over to Ben Pedley at Dow Jones Newswise in Singapore. Ben we've got so many rate decisions to get through near term. Uh, the Norwegian crown ultimately was very interesting yesterday. 
It certainly was. I mean, they raised rates, as you mentioned, Simon, as expected by 50 basis points, but higher yielding currencies are quite attractive to investors during these uh, unstable times and jittery uh, equity markets in particular. So we did see people uh, selling out of the euro and buying into the Norwegian crown. Ben, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Ben Pedley joining us live from Dad Jones Newswires in Singapore. 90 minutes past seven, we have to take a break and pay some bills here at CNBC Europe. After that, the latest international news. George W. Bush has said effectively it wasn't his fault that he didn't declare some of his shared dealings 10 years ago. Welcome back to today's Business Europe. I'm Serena Olawa. The United Nations mission in Bosnia is secure, at least for the days ahead, as the Security Council has voted to extend its mandate until July the 15th. Washington is refusing to back a six-month extension to the mission in a row over immunity for its peacekeepers at the new International Criminal Court. Paris 23, Milan 28, and leading that board, as usual, 34 degrees centigrade, the high in Madrid today. You're up to date there, Simon. Let's hope the weather improves as we go towards the Love Parade in Berlin next week. Are you going? <laughs> Are you? I might do. Uh, particularly as I read on the website that if you wear a thong, you'll get free transport. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to, speaking of which, let's go live to Tamor Nabili in Singapore for an update on the Asian markets. How are you doing, Tamor? I knew you were going to try something like that. Just then. <laughs> but I suspect, I suspect you'll be wearing a thong, won't you, Simon? Well, I always Surely. do when I, well, not when I'm on the telly, but the rest of the time, I tend to strut around the newsroom. It grabs a lot of attention. I, I wish I was there to see it. Anyway, let's get on quickly to the Asian markets because I'm sure they won't give me much time. Um, it's mostly higher around the board this morning, but Japan is lower today. Now, the reasons they're giving for this tend to vary. Some people are saying it's profit taking, some people are saying the US worries. So Keep this in mind, Bipap Kareri. Maurizio uh, resigns amid reports that indeed the Bank of England and Bank of Italy are indeed about to issue quite a scathing report. So Bipap Kareri could in actual fact be quite important. Simon? Over to you. Thank you very much. Still to come on the programme, we'll give you some technical analysis again on some of these European indices. Uh, in London today, a lot of the headlines grabbed by the fact that the London market, the FTSE 100, uh, is now lower uh, than it was before Tony Blair came to power. Stay with us. It is Thursday morning, July the 4th. This is Today's Business Europe, live from London. I'm Simon Hobbs. Our main headlines so far, having seized control of Vivendi Universal, France's business elite admit that the media giant's cash position is, quote, stretched. Also ahead, some technical analysis on where we are with some of these big indices around Europe. The eye of the storm yesterday remains Paris with Vivendi Universal. The CAC 40 as a result down, as you can see, over 3%. Some news overnight that could move EADS at the Open in Paris. Manus Cranny has it. Manus. Simon, thank you. Good morning. What we're seeing here with EADS is Air New Zealand uh, are in the market for new fleet. Uh, 15 new Airbus uh, essentially is what they've ordered. So keep your eyes across Capitalia, Simon. Uh, that is the holding vehicle today. Back to you. Thank you very much. 24 minutes to 8. Just hours after his appointment, the new head of Vivendi Universal admitted last night to a short-term cash problem. But Jean-René Fortu then moved to try and quickly reassure investors, saying that the group's assets do far exceed its debt. At the same time, Vivendi appointed AXA boss Claude Berber as head of the Finance Committee, a position that many analysts say effectively gives him uh, the real power behind the threat. You could argue he's had the power behind the throne all along because, of course, he kicked out Jean-Marie Messier. But now he's got a formal position on a very important committee. And he outlined uh, his first objectives last night. Vivendi is in talks with lenders to secure new credit to help pay off about €4 billion Euros of short-term debt. As for the overall position, the firm says that its cash pile is now just over €1 billion Euros and €1.6 billion Euros remains in unused credit lines. Looking to the future, the new management has promised to cut debt and restore investor confidence through greater transparency. So finally, we've got a very public display of unity at the helm of Vivendi Universal.
Will it help the shares? Rebecca Ulf is a senior analyst at Forrester Research and she joins me here in London. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard our interview earlier on from Paris, Rebecca, uh, but it was made clear at that point that this is only can be good for the shares, uh, in particular because Bebert is there. Um, I, I think, yes, this is, um, if nothing more than uh, it's showing to uh, investors and showing to the media at, at large that something's going on, something trying to address the issues. Rebecca, thank you for joining us this morning. Rebecca Ulf from Forrester Research on Vivendi. Time now, 7.39. We have to take a break. After that, we'll go live to Amsterdam and bring you some more technical analysis on European indices. Where are we likely to trade from here? Well, short term, we'll probably get a bounce at the open. US indices were pushed higher last night. you've just joined us Thursday morning 90 minutes to 8 we're looking at a slightly higher open around Europe today uh, some interesting moves towards the end of the uh, the session uh, in the States yesterday pushed the indices higher the email box here at CNBC yo cynics is full of people uh, alleging that the stock support guys uh, came in to try and push the indices higher going into today's uh, public holiday in the States certainly at the beginning of the session the volume was actually quite hard and quite fast and we did come below this 944 level uh, on the Dow Jones stocks 50, uh, I beg your pardon, on the S&P 500 that we've spoken about so much, which w obviously is the completion uh, of the head and shoulders formation. Let's have a look at where we're trading in Asia so far. I'm sorry, we, because you've seen him, we have to now introduce him, apparently. Uh, this is a technical analyst that I was telling you about. Hendrik Jan Davids uh, works for IRIS. Uh, and he joins me, uh, IRS Rabo uh, Rebecco uh, in Amsterdam, and he joins me now live, uh, for which I'm very grateful, actually, because I'd be very grateful if you could give us a view on where we're likely to trade, particularly on European indices from here. Yes, good morning, Simon. Well, European indices, as you know, have been uh, approaching long-term support levels. You mentioned uh, the S&P uh, dipping below the September low uh, last night. Uh, we spoke about the London market. That's covered, obviously, for CNBC Europe by Stephen Sedgwick. Uh, Steve, how do you think those comments will go down? Is, is it what other people are saying in the market? Yeah, well, I think uh, clearly we did break one uh, key level, which is the closing low from September the 21st yesterday. But uh, to be honest, it seemed all a bit easy for a lot of the bears yesterday. And although yesterday there will undoubtedly be uh, quite a substantial rally at the open, some people are calling us around about 70 points higher from our closing uh, level of 43.92. The fact remains that uh, the bears have at ease managed to break through some very key levels in the last couple of months. So it could well be a very long and tiring summer for uh, those balls, I'm afraid. So it doesn't look too encouraging, I'm afraid. Simon in the longer term. All right, thank you very much. A fine man, St. Ledger, was he not? Uh, I don't know who he was, actually, I must be honest. <laughs> I don't either, uh, but it's probably fairly good advice. Thank you very much, Steve. Steve Sedgwick joining us uh, for the, uh, the London market. We're going to take a break. We have to pay some bills. After that, we'll link with our other market reporters. Uh, OC's just reporting. We'll uh, uh, let you know whether that's above or below expectations as well. And the latest international news, not least the share dealings of Mr. George W. Bush. Stay with us. Welcome back to today's Business Europe. I'm Serena Allow. Let's check on the world news for you. The United Nations mission in Bosnia gets a temporary respite as the Security Council votes to extend its mandate until July the 15th. That was a quick update for you. For now, back to business, Simon. Thank you very much, Serena Allow. Let's catch up with the German market and how we're likely to open in Frankfurt. Live to Dan Scott. Dan, good morning. Good morning, Simon. Eon, the big focus for today's session. I mean, we are waiting to see when we are going to get a government ruling on the Ruhrgas takeover. You've already run through the news that we got through, that, that we got from Eon last night. Excuse me, I'm hearing feedback in my ear. If we could have studio turn that off, that'd be great. Um, government ruling for it, if government ruling, basically what we're expecting is to get the government ruling before the summer recess kicks in. The parliament goes into summer recess on Friday and lots of people are expecting to get a ruling before that happens. With that, I'll hand you back to the studio. Thank you very much. Dan Scott with a very comprehensive update from Frankfurt. OC has reported the first of the big Dutch guys to come through with its results for the second quarter. Manus Cranny has the figures. How do they look, Manus? Simon, better than expected. Excellent. Certainly better than the consensus out there in the marketplace. First half figures. Actually, let me give you the quarter two first of all. Rise by 11% to 27.9 million euros. Now, the expectation or the consensus in the market was 23.8 million in terms of uh, revenues, rising marginally by about 2%. 
Do you have difficulty staying awake at work on some of those early morning calls that you have? Me personally? This is Manus Cranny earlier on. What do you think Manus does <laughs> in the breaks when I'm talking? He just sits there and, wake up Manus, come on man, come on. <laughs> Even the bold and the beautiful, oh look at that. Even the bold and the beautiful sometimes have difficulty I can't you've done in the this. morning. Speaking of which, Mikey Boy Brown will be <laughs> our guest host on Squawk Box. Stay with us.